So there is a question that keeps popping up in the comments as well as in the Discord server. When you're farming for decorations, especially to get those juicy attack decos, is it better to farm Chungus or AT Lava sh**? As you may already know, we do have a guide on farming Chungus for the most efficient decoration farming. Link to that is in the top right. But that guide was made before Arc Tempered Lava sh** came out. So the question is now, which one is better? Well, I'm Jinjinx, one of the Monster Hunter math guys, and this is Jinx's musing, what is the best decoration farm? Chungus versus Lava sh**. Okay, so for those of you with extremely short attention spans, long story short, Lava sh** is better. But let's take a look at the math and see why that is the case. So both of them do puke out face stones, which you can use for very easy deco farming. Here on the left, we have the drop rates for the puke for Chunkus. And here on the right, we have the drop rates for Arc Tempered Lava sh**. We'll be calling him AT sh** for shorthand. Actually, I'm getting tired of hearing all the f***ing time, so let's switch it up with... Lava sh**? Yeah, that sounds good. As you can see, the drop rates are exactly the same. So for a puke farming only run, they're exactly the same. The main difference is it takes about 15 to 20 seconds less time to start fighting AT sh** than it does to actually wait for Chungus to eat an Aptonoth. Now this time save does start to stack up when you're grinding for hella decos. However, as we established in our Chungus video, it is a lot more efficient to actually farm captures on the quest than it is to do just puke farming. And because AT sh** does give you a lot more rare decos per run, it's even more worthwhile to do it than puke farming. But exactly how much better is it per run? In order to answer that question, we have to look at the rewards drop rates for each quest. The greatest Chungus and the name's Lava sh**. So on the left here, we have the drop rates for the Chungus quest. While here on the right, we have Lava sh** drop rates. As you can see, the drop rates are exactly the same with one key difference. AT sh** quest instead drops you two warped decos guaranteed instead of two worn decos. This is a very big deal. Warped face stones have a 3 times higher chance of dropping an R7 deco and a 2.5 times chance higher of an R8 deco. The average reward rolls for each of these quests is 12, and one of these reward rolls is automatically the two worn or two warped decos. This leaves us 11 reward rolls left over. When we compare the two side by side, you can see Chungus has quite a few more worn face stones, but you have almost twice the warped face stones from Lava. These warped face stones being so much more heavily weighted towards R7s and R8s gives us significantly higher average R7s and 8s per run. In fact, when comparing only the rewards, you get 65% more R7s, 71% more R8s, and 67% more R7s and R8s than Chungus. So this means that farming AT is a lot better compared to Chungus, right? Well, yes, but with a caveat. So if it takes you 67% more time to do an AT run compared to a Chungus run, they are equivalent. In other words, if it takes you 2 minutes to complete a Chungus run and 3 minutes and 20 seconds to complete an AT run, they are just as efficient as each other. Not accounting for loading times because that's very variable depending on whether you're on console or PC or have an SSD, etc, etc. Now the 67% slower caveat is important because Lava is kind of notorious for being a very time waster monster. He really likes to waste time inside of the lava where you can't hit him. He has his armor hardening mechanic that makes his hit zone values obscenely low once his armor cools down. This means you either run Mind's Eye or bounce constantly or find some reliable source of fire damage to soften his armor again. If you don't have this reliable source of fire damage, you pretty much have to either bounce constantly, use Mind's Eye and still do crap damage, or just wait for RNG to decide that he's gonna go for a swim. All in all, depending on how good you are at controlling these mechanics, it does mean that Lava sh** can be a much longer and much more frustrating fight compared to Chungus. However, this is assuming you're kind of just doing regular casual runs against both of them. If instead you're looking to do as efficient a run as possible for deco farming, we do already have a video on doing a 2 minute per run Chungus strategy. Now using this glutton strategy lets you farm him in about 2 minutes. This does mean that in order for an 80 sh** run to be equivalent, you have to farm him in 3 minutes and 20 seconds. This isn't really difficult to do, but does require a different strategy compared to Chungus. Now the faster strategy for farming 80 sh** is, surprise surprise, clustering. Clustering was not a very good matchup for Chungus, hence why we end up using Glutton for the strategy instead. On the other hand, Clusters is a perfect matchup for Lava 
It has hit some value independent damage, meaning even if he has hardened armor, you still deal almost full damage. On top of that, the small portion of cluster's damage that is not hit some value dependent is fire damage. This means the clusters constantly soften up his armor as well. Although realistically, if you're in a multiplayer setting and clustering, your teammates are also clustering, so the softened armor doesn't really matter. And in a solo situation, you're clustering, so you don't really care if the armor is softened, but it does mean that your palico will be hitting weak points. Neato. Now you can just do regular cluster strats if you're already familiar with them. With decent special RNG, you can just cluster, trap, cluster, trap, trank, cluster, and he'll normally be captured by then. Especially if you use the Dark Devourer cluster set we have in our meta heavy bowgun video. However, for the particular strategy we're going to recommend in this video for consistent sub 3 minute hunts, you will be using this cluster set. Wait a second, where is my max deeps? Fire resist 3, health boost 3, Jinjinx is recommending defensive skills? Nani the f- Okay, before you murder me in the comments and the Discord server, let me explain myself. This set is built around consistency of farming. You will get better clear times using our meta cluster set. However, AT does provide a particular problem with clustering him. And that's if you use the meta set, you will get one shot by his super puke even if you have health booster and rocksteady active. The reason why we don't normally recommend defensive skills is that you don't really need them in Monster Hunter World once you learn how to use your weapon skillfully and you learn the particular matchup well. This is why we don't generally recommend defensive skills unless they're necessary for the matchup. For example, you don't really need to use Guard Up against Teostra's Supernova because you can just dive it. By contrast, Behemoth's fire pillars in front of him of death move is an unblockable and very hard to iframe correctly. So against him, we do recommend Guard Up on Lance. Same deal with earplugs, you can just learn how to roll rolls instead of wasting 5 level 3 slots of efficiency on the skill. The issue here is that your reload time takes longer than the super puke does. This means it's purely RNG whether you're caught to it. Now if you're particularly skilled at clustering, you can just do the triple trap method and you'll be just fine. But in that case, you don't really need this video. In which case, just go, like, watch our April Fool's video or something and watch 10 minutes of iCat. The reason why we use Health Boost 3 and Fire Resist 3 is if you also eat for Elemental Resist Large, you have enough effective HP against this Super Puke to survive two in a row, at least with Health Booster and Rocksteady active. This completely removes the RNG of getting one shot by a Super Puke while you're reloading your clusters from the equation. It does mean you will take a few more clusters to actually get him capturable, but it does mean each run is a lot more consistent. To add to this consistency, we'll be running two health augments on the Dark Devourer instead of two attack augments. This again makes things a bit more consistent because it gives you increased healing, which also happens to increase your peak uptime. This set's definitely not going to be winning any world records, but it's great if you're going to be spending a few hours farming AT. So the actual strategy itself isn't really that complicated. First off, you want to start in Area 1. This is actually the closest place to his spawn points. Running from Area 12 instead takes a little bit longer. You basically just take this back route instead and it takes you right next to his spawn area. There actually is a slightly faster method to get here that uses the Gajalaka tunnels. However, on my PC account, I haven't actually unlocked the Gajalaka tunnels yet. And it only saves you a few seconds. So once you get to AT spawn area, he'll do three jumps. On the third one, he will jump out. He will land right in front of this glowing spot right here, so we set up right in front of it. We just drop a health booster, put on Rocksteady, and we start clustering. We keep clustering and clustering and clustering. And then we cluster some more. And then we cluster, and we cluster. We reload occasionally while crafting, and cluster. If he pushes us out of health booster, we roll back in and we cluster. And cluster and cluster and cluster and cluster and cluster and cluster 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 I, I think you get the point. The point at which we stop clustering is when he decides to jump back into the lava. At this point, we'll switch to sleep ammo. It takes three sleep, two ammos to sleep him. Once he is slept, we go ahead and reload all of our cluster ammo, put down barrel bombs. These are optional, but if you have bad spare shot RNG like me, you might need them. We then place a pitfall trap near where he's going to land when he wakes up. Be careful not to place this too close or he will fall into it before you wake him up. We make sure that we prime two trank ammo in him while he's still asleep. 
we're then going to position ourselves so the pit four trap is between us and him. This means if he runs over to us to try to attack us, he'll fall right into it. Then we wake him up with a wyvern ammo and then keep clustering. At this point, depending on RNG, you may have to roll a few lava puke attacks, but eventually he'll fall into the pitfall trap. Because we primed the two trank ammo earlier on, as soon as he hits the threshold for capture, he'll simply capture in this pitfall trap. So we keep clustering. If you had absolutely terrible special RNG, you may have to use a shock trap to finish it off. Now with this method, you can consistently get 2 minute 15 to 3 minute runs against AT sh which is a lot more efficient than the method we have with Chungus. Now, if you do not want to use either of these strategies that have very efficient farms and just want to use whatever weapon you want and just farm them normally, just remember the 67% time rule. If it takes you more than 67% more time to finish an AT quest as opposed to a Chungus quest, you should go with Chungus instead. And this is part of the problem with AT Lava is a notoriously annoying monster to fight. Capcom even admitted that he is the least hunted monster of the year, which is saying a lot when Zitsi Yaku and Kulu Yaku exist. And if you're not fighting him with clusters, he can be an extremely frustrating fight. By comparison, the Chungus is a very fun monster to fight in our opinion. So if I was personally looking to farm Dekos with, say, a Switch Axe or a Longsword just for the funsies of it, I would rather fight Chungus. But AT Lava is going to be more efficient. Alright, that about does it guys, that's all I have for this video. Thank you as always for watching the video, I hope this helped you figure out which one of these you want to use to get your juicy attack decos. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave it a like and let us know which decos you got from these farming methods in the comments. Thank you as always to Honey for making the tools we use to make sets with. And if you're looking for like-minded hunters to hunt with or just want to post with us about AT sh then check out our Discord server, The Mathalos Nest. Be sure to check us out on Twitter, where we post updates about the videos, as well as just random things that interest us. And be sure to check out Tuna on Twitch. He streams Monster Hunter World in a bunch of different games almost every single day. He is pretty much the guy to go to if you want to see live demonstrations of P1s for ATKT. And if you're interested in helping support us with bringing out this content to you guys, be sure to check out our Patreon. And an especially big thank you to Foray, Exponage, XCLK07, Haika, Milky Powder, Yoshi Cho, John Cohen, Lithoboli, Robin, Bram Orsel, Lightweight, Skylar Yang, Checklum, Lupin, Mongus, Zinv, Billy Barthol, Lord Sidone, Rodolph, Reaper Time, Jamie, and everyone else who supports us on Patreon. Seriously, thank you guys so much, this channel could not exist without your generosity. Even Math Robots gotta eat. Beep nom boop nom. Also, the patrons have spoken and the next meta builds video coming out is going to be Dual Blades. We know a lot of you guys in the comments have been wanting this one. However, I am going to be very busy this weekend. My partner Jenny's family is having a good old southern homecoming. Guns, trucks, Dixie, and good southern cooking. Nom 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 nom. But yeah, I won't have much time for editing this weekend. We're going to have those videos out to you guys as soon as possible, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you'd like to know as soon as they come out. Alright, that's all we got for you guys this time. Happy hunting, hunters. We will see you in the next one. Bye!